Welcome to Wall Street Confidential. I'm Aaron Task, joined again by Jim Kramer. Jim, welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Uh, there's a lot of economic data out today, but I want to talk about something else first. Again, today we have the misdirection from the futures. The futures point an up market, and as of right now, stocks are down again. Is this just because it's the holiday period that we're seeing this? You know, a lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, similarly, if uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are they're higher. And maybe commit five million in capital to do it, and I could affect it. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe it probably is bigger market now. Maybe you need ten million in capital to knock this stuff down, but it's a fun game and it's a lu <laughs> lucrative game, and you you can move it up and then fade it. That's all often creates a very negative feel. So let's say you take a longer term view intraday. And you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures, and then when the real sellers come in, real market comes in, they're going to knock it down. It's going to create a negative uh, negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing when you're value, when you're valued on a day to day basis. And I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal, right? And it uh, it is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Okay. Um, well. Oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. That's right, and you can say that here. I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to say it on TV. <laughs> um, well, on a related note, there's so many more hedge funds today than when you were right. managing your hedge fund. Right. Do you think that, that, does that exacerbate the moves or does it make it well, tougher? You know, the, the hedge funds are positioned long short, okay, not just long like mutual funds. So it's really vital these next six days because of your payday. You've really got to control the market. You can't let it lift. When you get a research in motion, it's really important to use a lot of your firepower to knock that down because it's the fulcrum of the market today. So I mean, let's say I were, uh, I were short. What I would do is I would hit a lot of guys with rim. Now you can't foment. That's a violation of, of ferment. Yeah, you can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down, but you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. But a, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So. Um, this is different from what I was talking about at the beginning where I would be buying the cues and stuff. Right. This is actually just a blatantly illegal. But when you have six days and your company may be in doubt because you're down, I think it's really important to ferment, uh, if I were one of these guys, ferment an impression that research in motion isn't any good because research in motion is the key Rich. today. So, you know, you would you would hit this guy and that guy, and when you would see an offering, when you see a guy who's bidding, you'd wipe out that guy very quickly. And what I used to do... Um, was called, if I wanted to go higher, I would take and bid, take and bid, take and bid. Um, and if, um, if I wanted to go lower, I'd hit an offer, hit an offer, hit an offer. And I could get a stock like RIM for maybe, that might cost me 15, 20 million, uh, Annie, to knock RIM down. But it would be fabulous because it would beleaguer all the moron longs who are also keying on research and motion. So there I see, we're seeing, on today with yeah, RIM, we're seeing that. That's, you know, again, when your company's in a survival mode, it's really important to defeat research in motion and get the Pisanis of the world and the people talking about it as if there's something wrong with RIM. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo reporter on research in motion and you would feed that there's a Palm's got a killer it's going to give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. Okay. Uh, another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, you Apple's very important to spread the rumor that um, that both uh, Verizon and, Bell and uh, ATT have decided they don't like the phone. Right. That's a very easy one to do because because it's also you want to spread the rumor that it's not going to be ready for Mac World, and this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story, and you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't and it doesn't. Right, they're not going to comment. They're not going right, to. So it's really an ideal short, and I would again, if I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone, you call Six Trading Desk, and you say, "Listen, I just got off the phone with my contact at Verizon, and he has already said, listen, we're not.'" We're a lucky G house. Uh, we're a Samsung house. We, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much. They, we're not going to let them in. This is not. We're not going to let them do what they did to music. And you know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. We're I might also, by the way, because the stock at 84, 85, a little bit of capital. You go buy some January 80 puts that makes it look like there's going to be something going on. So maybe you, you know, give Morgan an order to buy a thousand Jan 80 puts. Then you go position limit with a. Uh, 
you know, um, you use a hat firm that doesn't know what the heck it's doing. Maybe you go to UBS for puts. And, and you just kind of create an image that there's going to be news next week. And that's going to frighten everybody. Right. And then you g they all go out and say, large put buyer at uh, UBS. Then they call Pisani again. You have to use those guys. And say, listen, I'm a you know, I see a big buyer of puts and I'm told that it's like, it's SAC. You would do that too. Um, and these are all uh, what's really going on under the market that you don't see. Right. And don't, but, nobody else talks about right, it. But what, what, what's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. Because the truth is so against your view right. that it's important to create a new truth to develop a fiction. And um, the, the fiction is developed uh, by almost anybody who's down like 2% to up 6% here. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up 6 Because starting Jan 2, you'll have all your money come out. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate is that you would do these actions? So you're talking about the mechanics of the market. Well, you know, the mechanics are much more important than the fundamentals. Oh, okay. Well, but in terms of the fundamentals, you've been writing about how Who you cares think. cares about the fundamentals? Research and motion just blew out the quarter. Right. But look what people can do. I mean, that's a fabulous thing. The great thing about the market is it has nothing to do with the actual stocks. Right. Now, look, over maybe two weeks from now, the buyers will come to their senses and realize that everything that they heard was a lie. Uh, but then again, Fannie Mae lied about their earnings for $6 billion. So, right, you know, and Bristol Myers just, lied. It's just fiction yeah. and fiction and fiction. And I think it's important for people to recognize that the way that the market really works is to is to have that nexus of, of hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press, um, and then get it on CNBC. That's also very important. A and then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. And it can be played. You can pay for a percent or two. Right. And then do you get long before Macworld and the expectation that well, the yeah, iPhone is, is going to be down. good? Right. And then you go you, back well, you, to the long side. you use the other side. Interesting. Yeah, that, you know, and there's a case where I would say the January 80 puts can be justified because after I've knocked the stock down to 80, I can buy a lot of common. And then you play it right into Macworld where they'll probably introduce the phone and Verizon's going to take it. Okay. Well, maybe the fundamentals don't matter, but let's talk about the well, Fed remember, a little bit. Well, <laughs> remember, what, what Wall Street Confidential is, yes. is is not giving you the party line. Oh, here's the right. party line, by the way. Um, the, I, 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 I spoke to Apple, the phone. I hear the phones are good, and um, Verizon might take it. And As a matter of fact, the research and motion sellers, they, I don't think they know what they're talking about. It, you know, but you've been writing about the, the cell market, cell phone market. You think is you don't want to well, be involved in that. The problem right? with the cell phone market, frankly, is is that these guys are all killing each other. You know, right. someone has to take a dive. Motorola and Nokia have to get in a room and just fix price. They've been reluctant to do that because of the various justice departments and because they and actually, it's illegal, right? Yeah. Well, th that hasn't stopped a lot of other companies. This, this is true. This seems to be a case where they seem to be directly worried about the authorities. It's almost as if they have a lawyer that that matters, unlike say the Bristol Myers lawyers. And you know what eventually happens is the shareholders demand that you get phony lawyers and you sit in the room. And it'll happen soon. Real quick, the Fed, the numbers out today weaker than expected. Oh, so PC what? The Fed has obviously got a cut. But you know, again, cut. you call, you call um, the various guys who cover the bonds and you say, D ignore the bond action. What's really happened is the Fed is very frightened about it. And then you gin up the number that they're really frightened about. The Fed is actually... Um, Desperate to try to figure out, uh, you know, how quickly they have to cut without looking like dopes that they that they raised. Right, because they've been talking about they're worried yeah, about inflation all this last few months. You don't want to raise in May and then cut in, in January. You look like Mexico for heaven's sake. I mean, this is like a distinguished group of people who went to really good schools. Right, these are smart guys. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't want to look like dopes. Uh, but when we were talking earlier in the week, you said you think it would be some sort of crisis, possibly Ford being a trigger. Well, you know, Ford went and did all that, you know, they pledged all this investment banking to all these guys. So now that they're very reluctant to say negative things, it, it makes it much tougher for the Ford story to play out. I mean, the amount of business that Ford has to do. Ford may be the big client of 2007. So if I were in the corporate finance room, I would say, listen to the, to the research guy. I said, listen, you know, I spoke with Malayli. I actually have the inside. The plan works. So then you're the research guy and you say, oh, man, what do I do? Um, it's bonus time. I'm not going to be a total idiot. But Spitzer's going to Albany. L let, let's get back in the game. Right. I uh, think that's important. Is it possible? Because a year ago at this time, a lot of people were saying GM's about to go bankrupt, and of course, the stock's up 50 some odd percent. Well, they're, you know, they're, that stock they're GM. 57, you know, but GM, the difference between Ford and GM was the GM's balance sheet was never really, it turns out, wasn't that bad. Ford's balance sheet's pathetic, and you know that because they were willing to screw over the common for the bonds. Right. Like, that's kind of, if it weren't Ford, if this were um, Qualcomm, We'd be saying Qualcomm is desperate, you know, but no, it's Ford. But it's so Ford, it's, it's an American icon. Yeah, I, I drove so, a right. Ford, you know, I owned a Ford once. Yeah. And this is our country. Well, yeah, this right. has been Jim Cramer. Again, you know, I, what I'm trying to go for in the Wall Street Confidential, and I'm not saying you're sending me, I, I have to talk about what it's like at my hedge fund, okay, because, and what other hedge funds do. Because the difference is, is that 
if this is an intraday show and you need to know what's going what I know is going right. on. Now, we step back. Research in motion was a real blowout quarter. It was a really good quarter. And I was quite surprised how strong the margins were. It looks like the other guys have really dropped out. It's a terrific story. Should it be up six? Yeah, I think so. But you know, look where we are. It's Friday. You know, you got five more days to make your quarter. Right. Can you really risk having rim up this much? I don't think you can. Okay, and they're not. And if I'm correct, you're off next week. Yes, I okay, am. Okay, and but I am you know, as well. Right. So we'll be back in 2007. I'm hoping that we get that we finish the year at 1260 because that's uh, at 12,460 because that's what I said at the beginning of the year was. Now yesterday we came in and we were 20 points away from what I predicted. You know, I, I want to nail it. Do you have a forecast for 2007? Yeah, um, but I'm not. It, it comes up. It, it's over a series of five days, so people have to go Our to realmoney.com. Check it out on realmoney.com and. Jim, thanks very much for Thank being here. You. I'm Aaron Task. Stay tuned for more of thestreet.com TV.